Hippocratic Oath. They stayed at the edge of the rusty ruins. Occasionally, hover cars would pass over the crumbling city, threading a slow search pattern across the sky. But the Smokies were old hands at hiding from satellites and aircraft. They placed red herrings across the ruins, chemical glow sticks that gave off human-sized pockets of heat, and covered the windows of their building with sheets of black mylar. And, of course, the ruins were very large. Finding seven people in what had once been a city of millions was no simple matter. Every night, Tally watched the influence of the new smoke grow. A lot of uglies had seen the burning message on the night of the escape, or had heard about it, and the nightly pilgrimage pilgrimages out to the ruins slowly increased until sparklers wavered atop high buildings from midnight until dawn. Tally, Ride, Croy, and Asterix made contact with the city uglies, starting new rumors, teaching new tricks, and offering glimpses of the ancient magazines the boss had salvaged from the smoke. If they doubted the existence of the special circumstances, Tally showed them the plastic handcuff bracelets still encircling her wrists and invited them to try and cut the cuffs off. One new legend towered above all the rest. Maddie had decided that the brain lesions couldn't be kept a secret anymore. Every ugly had the right to know what the operation really entailed. Tally and the others spread the rumor among their city friends. Not just your face was changed by the knife. Your personality, the real you inside, was the price of beauty. Of course, not every ugly believed such an outrageous tale but a few did, and some sneaked across to New Pretty Town in the dead of night to talk to their older friends face to face and decided for themselves. The specials sometimes tried to crash the party, setting traps for the new Smokies, but someone always gave a warning and no hover car could ca ever catch a board among winding streets and rubble. The new Smokies learned the nooks and crannies of the ruins as if they'd been born there until they could disappear in a heartbeat. Maddie worked on the brain cure, using materials salvaged from the ruins or brought by city uglies willing to borrow from hospitals and chem classes. She withdrew from the rest of them, except for David. She seemed particularly cool to Tally, who felt guilty for every moment she spent with David, now that his mother was alone. None of them ever talked about Az's death. Shay stayed with them, complaining about the food, the ruins, her hair and clothes, and having to look at all the ugly faces around her. But she never seemed bitter, only perpetually annoyed. After the first few days, she didn't even talk about leaving. Perhaps the brain damage made her pliant, or the fact that she hadn't lived in New Pretty Town for long? She still remembered them all as friends. Tally sometimes wondered if Shay secretly enjoyed having the only pretty face in their little rebellion. Certainly she didn't do any more work than she would have in the city. Ride and Asterix obeyed her every command. David helped his mother, searching the ruins for salvage, and taught wilderness survival tricks to any ugly who wanted to learn. But in the two weeks after his father's death, Tally found herself missing the days when it had been just the two of them. Twenty days after the rescue, Maddie announced that she had found a cure. Shay, I want to explain this to you carefully. Sure, Maddie. When you had the operation, they did something to your brain. Shay smiled. Yeah, right. She looked across at Tally, wearing a familiar expression. That's what Tally keeps telling me. But you guys don't understand. Maddie folded her hands. What do you mean? I like the way I look, Shay insisted. I'm happier in this body. You want to talk about brain damage? Look at you all, running around these ruins, playing commando. You're all full of schemes and rebellions, crazy with fear and paranoia, even jealousy. Her eyes skipped back and forth between Tally and Maddie. That's what being ugly does. And how do you feel, Shay? Maddie asked calmly. I feel bubbly. It's nice not being all raging with hormones. Of course, it kind of sucks being out here instead of in the city. No one's keeping you here, Shay. Why haven't you left? Shay shrugged. I don't know. I'm worried about you guys, I guess. It's dangerous out here, and messing with specials isn't a good idea. You should know that by now, Maddie. Tally took a sharp breath, but Maddie's expression didn't change. And you're going to protect us from them? She asked calmly. Shay shrugged. I just feel bad about Tally. If I hadn't told her about the smoke, she'd be pretty right now instead of living in this dump. 
and I figure eventually she'll decide to grow up. We'll go back together. You don't seem to want to decide for yourself. Decide what? Shay rolled her eyes, looking at Tally to confirm what a bore this was. The two of them had plowed through this conversation a dozen times before, until Tally had realized there was no convincing Shay that her personality had changed. To Shay, her new attitude was simply the result of growing up, moving on, leaving all the overheated emotions of ugliness behind. "'You weren't always this way, Shay,' David said. "'No, I used to be ugly.' Maddie smiled gently. "'These pills won't change the way you look. "'They'll only affect your brain, "'undoing what Dr. Cable did to the way your mind works. "'Then you can die decide for yourself how you want to look.' "'Decide? After you've messed with my brain?' Shay, Tally said, forgetting her promise to remain silent. We're not the ones messing with your brain. Tally, David said softly. That's right. I'm the one who's crazy. Shay's voice took on the tone of her daily round of complaining. Not you guys who live in a broken down building on the edge of a dead city, slowly turning into freaks when you could be beautiful. Yeah, I'm crazy, all right, for trying to help you. Tally sat back and crossed her arms, silenced by Shay's words. Whenever they had this conversation, reality became a little unhinged, as if she and the other new Smokies really might be the insane ones. It felt like Tally's horrible first days in the smoke, when she hadn't known whose side she was on. "'How are you helping us, Shay? Maddie asked calmly. "'I'm trying to get you to understand!' Just like you did when Dr. Cable used to bring you by myself? Shay's eyes narrowed, confusion clouding her face, as if her memories of the underground prison didn't fit in with the rest of her pretty worldview. I know Dr. C was horrible to you, she said. The specials are psychos. Just look at them. But that doesn't mean you have to spend your whole lives running away. That's what I'm saying. Once you turn, specials won't mess with you. Why not? Because you won't make trouble any more. Why not? Because you'll be happy. Shay took a couple of deep breaths and her usual cal calm returned. She smiled, beautiful again. Like me. Maddie picked up the pills on the table in front of her. You won't take these willingly? No way. You said they're not even safe. I said there was a small chance something could go wrong. Shay laughed. You must think I'm nuts. And even if these pills work, look what they're supposed to do. From what I can tell, cured means being a jealous, self-important, whiny little ugly brain. It means thinking you've got all the answers. She crossed her arms. In a lot of ways, you and Dr. Cable are alike. You're both convinced you've personally got to change the world. Well, I don't need that, and I don't need those. Okay, then. Maddie picked up the pills and put them in her pocket. That's all I have to say. What do you mean? Tally asked. David squeezed her hand. That's all we can do, Tally. What? You said we could cure her. Maddie shook her head. Only if she wants to be cured. These are experimental, Tally. We can't give them to someone against her will. Not when we don't know if they'll work. But her mind. She's got the lesions. Hello, she said. She is sitting right here. Sorry, Shay, Maddie said mildly. Tally? Maddie pulled aside the Myler barrier, stepping out onto what the new Smokies called the balcony. It was really just top, part of the top floor of the building where the roof had entirely collapsed, leaving sweeping views of the ruins. Tally followed. Behind her, Shay was already talking about what was for dinner. David came out a moment later. So we give her the pill secretly, right? Tally whispered. No. Maddie said firmly, We can't. I'm not going to do medical experiments on unwilling subjects. Medical experiments? David took her hand. You can't know for sure how something like this will work. It's only a 1% chance, but it could screw up her brain forever. It's already screwed up. But she's happy, Tally. David shook her head, his head. And she can make decisions for herself. Tally pulled her hand away, staring out over the city. A sparkler was already showing on the tall spire, uglies come to gossip and trade. 
Why did we even have to ask? They didn't get her permission when they did this to her. That's the difference between us and them, Maddie said. After As and I found out what the operation really meant, we realized we'd been heart party to something horrible. People had had their minds changed without their knowledge. As doctors, we took an ancient oath never to do anything like that. Tally looked into Ma Maddie's face. But if you weren't going to help Shay, why did you even bother finding a cure? If we knew our treatment would work safely, then we could give it to Shay and see how she felt about it later. But to test it, we need a willing subject. Where are we ever going to find one? Anyone who's pretty is going to say no. Maybe for right now, Tally. But if we keep making inroads into the city, we might find a pretty who wants out. But we know Shay's crazy. She's not crazy, Maddie said. Her arguments make sense, in fact. She's happy as she is and doesn't want to take a deadly risk. But she's not really herself. We have to change her back. As died because someone thought like that, Maddie said grimly. What? David put his arm around her. My father... <clears throat> he cleared his throat and Tally waited in silence. Finally, he would tell her how As had died. He took a slow breath before continuing. Dr. Cable wanted to turn them all, but she was worried that Mom and Dad might talk about the brain lesions, even after the operation, because they'd been focused on them for so long. David's voice trembled, but it was soft and careful, as if he didn't dare put any emotion into the words. Dr. Cable was already working on ways to change memories, a way of erasing the smoke forever from people's minds. When they took my father for the operation, he never came back. That's awful. Tally whispered. She gathered him into a hug. As was the victim of a medical experiment, Tally, Maddie said. I can't do the same thing to Shay. Otherwise she'd be right about me and Dr. Cable. But Shay ran away. She didn't want to become pretty. She doesn't want to be experimented on either. Tally closed her eyes. Through the mylar shade she could hear Shay telling Ride about the hairbrush she'd made. For days she'd proudly shown the little brush made of splinters of wood shoved into a lump of clay to anyone who would listen, as if it were the most important thing she'd ever done. They had risked everything to rescue her, but they had nothing to show for it. She would never be the same. And it was all Tally's fault. She'd come to the smoke and had brought the specials, leaving Shay an empty-headed pretty and as dead. She took a deep breath. Okay, you've got a willing subject. What do you mean, Tally? Me, 